Good morning. Today we are going to investigate the relationship between the length of a slinky and the speed at which a pulse travels through it. So let's commence operations. So to do this lab we will have to measure the length and we'll be adjusting the length many times. When we adjust the length we are actually adjusting the tension of the slinky. Now this length is approximately 4 meters, as illustrated in the diagram. And today we'll be using the following four different lengths. We'll stretch the slinky to 3 meters, 4 meters, 5 meters, and finally 6 meters. We'll be launching a transverse pulse. To create a transverse pulse, we need to move the slinky rapidly back and forth. Now the motion will be perpendicular to the slinky itself. Finally, we need to track the motion. We'll be recording the time with a stopwatch. When you see the pulse approach that point, you're going to start your stopwatch. And when you see the pulse approach to that point, you're going to stop the stopwatch. The distance between those two points is approximately one meter. Here's the table I'd like you to complete. Notice for slow motion trial times, you're recording the time on four different occasions. And so let's get to it. Here is the information for when the slinky is stretched to three meters long. Take out your stopwatches. Here we go. Start. Stop. Next, here is the four meter trial run when the slinky was stretched to four meters long. Get ready, here we go. Here is the five meter trial run when the slinky was stretched to five meters long. And finally, here is the 6 meter trial run where the slinky was stretched to a length of 6 meters. To calculate average time, we're going to take our average slow motion time and divide by 4. So why are we dividing by 4? Well, because we're watching the videos using slow motion, slow motion actually increases the time by a factor of four. That's why we're dividing by four. Then I want you to calculate the speed using this equation here, distance over time. So hopefully, by the time you've arrived at this point in the video, you've completed this entire table and shown all your work. Finally, the last task I'd like you to do is to plot a graph using the information I have circled, the length and the speed. And so, of course, I always want a professional title. Professional title should include the independent and independent variable within the title. I want to line up best fit. I want you to calculate the slope and include the appropriate units with significant digits. And then finally, a sentence explaining what the slope means. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Have a great day. Bye-bye.